Good morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. Try to call in early. I hate leaving people on hold, which we invariably do. If you call late in the program, it'll be hard to get to uh, all our calls. So please call in early. And if we left you on hold yesterday or in the past, just tell our call screener and we'll get you first up, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, formulations, ingredients, skin health questions, or if you just have a comment or success story, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, Beyond Osteo FX or Fucoid Z or any of the fine longevity products, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start a business if you're an entrepreneur or if you're entrepreneurially minded. If it, the entrepreneur lifestyle sounds good to you, if you want to be your own boss, if you want to work out of the home, you owe it yourself to at least check out, at least look into the longevity business. You can help change the world with nutritional supplementation. The products sell themselves, and you can make as little or as much money as you like. Call 866-735-2470 if you want more information, where you can just sign up right off the website, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol Gel. Just had some genetic testing done on our retinol gel, and the results were amazing. Upregulation of anti-aging genes. Some anti-aging genes were regulated, were up regulated, were stimulated, activated by our Truth Retinol 5% gel to the tune of 930 times. That's amazing. That's basically turning a gene on. Our retinol, and this was, uh, I spent a lot of money to have this done, test done, a genetic test done on our Truth Retinol 5% gel. I'll be putting that out on our website, uh, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, here in the next, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks or so. In any case, if you're looking for anti-aging products, if you have acne blemishes, if you have hyperpigmentation, if you just are sick of skin care products that don't work, you owe it to yourself again to check out our Truth Treatments Truth treatment products. I call them treatments because they are treatments. They're not skin care. They're treatments. You use tiny little bits. You take days off, at least of our Truth Retinol 5% gel, and you notice benefits and effects and skin changes within days and dramatic skin changes, dramatic changes in the texture and health and wellness and appearance and attractiveness of the skin within weeks to months. You can check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. Thanks for joining us on The Bright Side. Once again, we're continuing talking about plant nutrition. The more I study about plants, the more amazed I am by these things. Plants have been around for maybe 500 million years, 450 to 500 million years on the planet. 
Obviously, we know that they have tremendous benefits for health benefits, nutritional benefits, but there's also a dark side to plants. Plants are living systems, living creatures, and living systems and living creatures have one imperative, and that is to survive at all costs. And thus, plants have evolved some pretty, pretty interesting strategies that will ensure their survival. Now, there's a fine line between these strategies, which are in many cases poisons or poisonous, and the nutritional value of plants. Yesterday, we talked about four main points that need to be recognized when it comes to leveraging or taking advantage of the powerful medicine-like properties of these substances. Remember, there's a fine line between medicine and therapy and poison. And if you want to leverage or take advantage of the therapeutic, medicinal, healing, nutritional value of plants without getting into the poisonous parts, without getting into the poisonous aspects of plants, there's a couple things you want to recognize. Yesterday we talked about four main points, particularly when it comes to the polyphenols. Now I know you don't hear a lot about, you don't hear that word a lot, polyphenols, but you will be hearing it a lot in the coming years, in the coming months, in the coming years, the polyphenols are set to become the next greatest, most powerful element of nutrition. The polyphenols include substances like the lignans, which are found in nuts and seeds, the still beans like resveratrol, the phenolic acids, which are found in cinnamon and other spices, as well as green tea, and then the most important class of the polyphenols, which are the flavonoids. Four main points when it comes to these kinds of plant nutrients, when it comes to all plant nutrients, not just the polyphenols. Number one, phytonutrients, many of these phytonutrients, which are so healthy, don't absorb into the bloodstream very effectively from the intestines. So you got to make sure your digestive system is operating at peak efficiency and that you're supporting absorption and processing of these substances. Yesterday, we talked about mixing plants with oils, mixing plants with butter and coconut oil maybe braising your plants a little bit or your, your veggies a little bit. Release those nutrients. Point number two, many of these phytonutrients come with sugar. So be careful with your fruits. Use vegetable powders like the Ultimate Youth from Longevity and the Beyond Tangy Tangerine that have these pigments and, and plant nutrients, phytonutrients in a powder form without the sugar. Point number three, cooking do, does destroy polyphenols, but Steaming a little bit or braising a little bit can help release the nutrients. Point number four, the botanical world is toxic, or at least it can be toxic, over the course of hundreds of millions of years. 450 million years of evolution, plants have developed a wide variety of chemical weaponry, of biological weaponry, of physical weaponry to protect themselves from, uh, from predators and their babies, their seeds from, from predators. Plants don't want to be eaten. Plants don't want their seeds to be eaten sometimes. Sometimes plants will actually encourage seeds to be eaten so that the seeds can get spread around through the digestive tract of the predator and then excreted or eliminated as the predator eliminates the food. The seeds will get eliminated. But many times plants don't want their seeds to be eaten. The seeds can have some pretty toxic substances in them. I remember when I was a kid, they used to say, don't eat apple seeds, don't swallow your watermelon seeds. Almonds, uh, nuts can be very toxic, N nuts being seeds. Grains, of course, are a type of seed, and they have toxins in them. I know we eat grains all the time, but we got to process our grains. We got to crush them up before we eat them. We got to put water in them. We've got to deactivate them somehow before we eat our grains. Grains are very unpalatable, and sometimes they're even toxic. Gluten, for example, is a toxin that's found in seeds called grains. Even the colors of plants can be a type of defensive weaponry. The colors allow a plant to camouflage into their surroundings. Sticky sap, sticky resin, that's another protect, uh, plant protective element. Sticky sap traps insects that would eat the plants. The hard coating around seeds is protective. And then there's hundreds, if not thousands, of biological or chemical weapons that plants produce that reduce their palatability. Some of these we call alkaloids. This is why many plants have a bitter, bitter taste. This is why kids don't like to eat their veggies. This is why, and a lot of people don't like to eat their veggies because of the bitter taste. The bitter taste is a plant, uh, uh, one of the ways the plant protects itself. And then, of course, there's just plain, plain old poisons. And it's kind of counterintuitive. Well, well, we'll finish this up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, anything we're speaking about here here today, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, or if you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team. Call 866-735-2470 or sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, which, by the way, was voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. Their most recent Harper's Bazaar Magazine has a... uh, has a kind of a compilation of their top 150 different products and uh, in their skincare section, in their skin health section, Truth Serum was voted one of the top 150 products in the world, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, you can find out all about our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Retinol, 5% Gel, all our Truth Treatment products, never any preservatives, water, fragrance, fillers, waxes, surfactants, silicon, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. You can find out all about them at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so uh, po- uh, botanical world can be quite poisonous. And this is somewhat counterintuitive because we've all been conditioned to believe that going veggie is always going to be good for us. When I talk to people on the phone, they say, well, I eat really well. All I have is salads. I just eat lots of veggies. Well, guess what? You can have problems with veggies. In fact, you can have more problems with veggies than you do with meat. There's no toxic meat. There's no toxic steaks. There's no toxic hamburgers. But there's lots of toxic plants. For the most part, aside from uh, the difficulty in processing and crushing up dense amounts of protein, you're not going to really have digestive problems by eating fish, by eating shrimp, by eating meat. Now, if you have problems with stomach acid, you may have an issue. Or if you have problems perhaps with digestive enzymes, you may have an issue. But not like with plants. You can have your digestive enzymes and your, hy- your hydrochloric acid secretion can be just fine. And you can still have problems with plant toxins. And this is counterintuitive. This is not what we're told. We're told that going veggie is really good for us. In, uh, at the turn of the 20th century, Crisco, when they developed Crisco, which was originally uh, processed co- c- cottonseed oil, it was uh, advertised as a good oil, even though it was really toxic stuff, because it was vegetable oil. For a long time, we thought vegetable oil was the way to go. McDonald's was really proud of their vegetable oil fried french fries. Oh, we only use vegetable oil. We don't use lard anymore. Well, guess what? Vegetables and vegetable oil can be worse for you than lard and meat. So you got to be careful here. Plants make some pretty powerful chemicals that can be toxic to the animals that eat those plants. I'm not talking about big-time poisonous plants here. I'm not talking about hemlock. I'm not talking about the deadly nightshade and atropine, which contains a medicine called atropine or belladonna, I believe. I forgot the name of the toxin in the deadly nightshade. Tobacco. That's another really nasty plant, poisonous plant. And nerium. You guys ever hear this company called nerium? Nerium is a, a multi-level, I think it's a multi-level company. It's a, they make skin products. Supposedly they're good for you. No, they're not. Nerium is toxic stuff. Nerium is really toxic. The plant that nerium is derived from, the nerium oleander plant, is also known as the suicide tree. And uh, that's because in, I forgot which country it is, I think Malaysia, some Asian country where nerium grows, they use it to kill themselves. The same nerium that you rub on your face if you're part of that nerium multi-level company. Nerium was originally researched as a chemotherapeutic agent for killing cancer. Nerium is associated with oxidation, reduction of protein synthesis, as well as killing cells. But I'm not talking about frankly, blatantly poisonous plants. I'm talking about subtle poisons. I'm talking about poisons in plants that are subtle in terms of their effects on humans, and they may not even be recognized for their anti-health and even disease-inducing properties. We've talked in the past about substances called lectins, L-E-C-T-I-N-S. That's another thing that you heard on the bright side years ago and that you're now starting to hear more and more about. Lectins are a classic example of plant poisons, and lectins don't really uh, achieve their effects their negative effects on our health until years have gone by. 
Sometimes decades have gone by. A lot of these poisons that plants make were not primarily directed against human beings. Remember, plants are 450 million years old. Human beings have only been around for a couple hundred thousand, or maybe if you want to, inc if you want to include our evolutionary ancestors, maybe two million years. So plants predate us by hundreds of millions of years. The first predators of plants were insects. They were the original plant predators, and then birds and other small animals, which are thousands of times smaller than we are. So the poisons in plants don't kill us. They don't paralyze us like they do an insect. But they add up over the course of time. The plant, uh, p the plant poison molecules, the, the uh, anti-predator molecules, may paralyze or kill a bug or maybe harm a sparrow or a small rodent, but their effects on human beings, human predators, may only cause a little GI distress, a little stomach problems, a little digestive problems. And maybe after long-term, large-scale ingestion, that's when you're going to start to get infl an inflammatory response or, or maybe uh, arthritis or maybe an autoimmune disease. Yes, your autoimmune disease can very well be related to plant toxicity. And these effects are subtle. They're tiny. You may not know about it for years. Not that this is not a big issue. It is a big issue. And anyone who has an autoimmune disease can tell you it is. If you have any kind of inflammatory disease and you're eating lots of veggies, pay attention. This is why a food diary is so important. This is why writing down everything you eat is so important. The real issue is, is that you've got to pay attention. These effects are subtle. They only occur after lots of exposure to these toxins, and we may not know that we're ingesting toxic substances regularly, and that could be related to our inflammatory health challenge. All right. So we've been talking about PCOS. We talked about PCOS uh, a couple of, about a week, maybe 10 days ago. I didn't finish it up. It's a very important subject. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. You want to think about it as a blood sugar problem. For those of you who do not know what it is, PCOS is a, a health challenge that is really, really miserable. It affects women. It involves uh, body hair, hair on the face, losing hair on the head, acne, oily skin, weight gain, P, uh, PMS, reproductive issues, anxiety, depression. Just a big mess. And it is a blood sugar problem and also an estrogen problem. The best way to prevent PCOS is not to eat the sugar. Now, I know that's easier said than done because sugar is addictive. If you're jonesing for sugar, if you're addicted to sugar, there's other strat there's uh, other foods there's there's strategies food strategies choices you can make that can help wean you off of sugar and you can tell you're addicted to sugar by the way if you're craving sweets and you're not actually hungry if that pie or chocolate or candy or whatever your favorite sweets are looks good to you but you're not hungry and there's kind of a disconnect between hunger and the desire for sweets you are self medicating remember sugar is a way that we self medicate sugar tells the body everything is right in the world and when you go for sugar, or when, you, uh, when you're actually eating the sugar, as we said yesterday, it's impossible to think a lousy thought. This is true about all food, but especially sugar. Notice when you're eating your sweets that it's impossible to have a negative, depressed, and uh, anxious thought as you're eating the sweet, as the spoon is raised to your mouth. Of course, when you're done, then your anxiety comes back. There's lots of ways to help lower your blood sugar. Eating less is obviously the most important, but there's lots of supplements you could use too. And of course, green tea. EC, EGCG and green tea also has anti-diabetic and anti-sugar properties. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be Here, got lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010, and we'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang tight. On our next Bright Side episode, we'll continue talking about sugaring, anti-sugaring strategies, ketogenic diet, we'll touch on that a little bit, and using nutritional supplements for dealing with sugar. There's sugar everywhere, everywhere. Ketchup has sugar, mustard has sugar, bread has sugar, oatmeal has sugar. Vegetables, of course, uh, fruits especially, but vegetables too contain sugar. It's, uh, when people tell me they don't eat any sugar, I find that very, very hard to believe. And keep in mind, protein gets turned into sugar as well. We'll, we'll talk about all of these uh, all these subjects here on our next Bright Side episode. 844-236-6010 is our number. From, 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 where is this from here? 
from the journal Nutritional Neuroscience. Studies link healthy brain aging to omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids in the blood. That's your ultimate EFAs, friends. And of all the nutritional deficiencies, this may be the most common because it's very difficult to get essential fats from foods. It's incredibly important to supplement with essential fatty acids. They're part of the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. You got to go out of your way to get these things. They're hard to find in food. You got to use a good nutritional supplement if you want to get enough ultimate, uh, enough essential fatty acids, and that's where your ultimate EFAs come in, especially if you're dealing with brain health issues. Now, this is this is a study that talked about aging brains, but it's especially important for young brains, for developing brains, for fetal brains, brains in the womb, babies that uh, moms who have babies. Or, or moms who supplement with omega-3 fatty acids have babies with better hand-eye coordination, better visual acuity. Omega-3s are vitally important for the entire nervous system, including the eyes and the brain. And omega-3, omega-6s, which we hear uh, a lot of nutritionists will tell you, oh, don't worry about your omega-6s, not true. You don't get omega-6s from the oils we eat. People will say, well, we eat all these omega-6 containing oils. You eat corn oil, you eat soy oil, you eat veggie oils, you're gonna get omega-6s. No, not true. Most of the oils we eat are cooked. Most of the oils we eat are processed. Cooked oils, processed oils, refined oils are not gonna have a lot of omega-6s in them. Whenever you're eating oils, by the way, or whenever you're taking your ultimate EFAs, make sure you use vitamin E. Vitamin E is nature's fat-protecting molecule, and this is one of the big problems associated with oils, as we've talked about in the past. Oils without vitamin E become rancid very quickly, oxidize very quickly, and that's the problem with these oils. Use vitamin E. Also, alpha-lipoic acid is another nutrient that can help stabilize fats. Selenium is another nutrient that can help stabilize fats. Using alpha lipoic acid, selenium, and uh, vitamin E with your EFAs is advised. And by the way, alpha lipoic acid is spelled alpha A-L-P-H-A, lipoic L-I-P-O-I-C, and acid, alpha lipoic acid. From uh, the research department at the American and Norwegian University, Oxytocin, which is known as your love chemical, love hormone. I love this article. Check this out. Love hormone oxytocin is released during crisis. When we're under stress, when we're under crisis, the body will secrete what is called the love hormone, so much so, so that these researchers are calling the love hormone the uh, crisis hormone. And I'm, this is an article actually from the University of New Mexico. University of New, uh, New Mexico researchers have determined that oxytocin, which is often called the love hormone or the cuddle, or the cuddle hormone, may it well be called the crisis hormone. This may be one of the reasons why people are addicted to crises. You ever notice how there's one crisis after another in some people's lives? It may be that we use crisis to self-medicate. If you're secreting love hormone, if you're secreting oxytocin, when you go through a crisis, it makes sense that you would want crisis after crisis after crisis. There's better ways to secrete oxytocin. Some real love will help secrete oxytocin, will help stimulate the secretion of oxytocin. How much water do we really need? This is from uh, the U U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention. If you're not, uh, they say if you're healthy, you should get enough fluid by drinking when you're thirsty and drinking fluids with meals. I love this. So many times you hear people say, don't drink fluids with your meals. Not true. You want to drink fluids with your meals. If you drink fluids with your meals, you'll find you're eating less food. If you drink fluids with your meals, you're going to facilitate nutrient absorption. And even if you don't drink fluids with your meals, your body is going to turn, uh, is going to crush up that food in the stomach, and it's going to add water from the, from the inside of your body. So eventually, you're going to be drinking water anyway. The uh, food in the digestive tract, food in the stomach, has to be turned into a soup, a soupy mass called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, chyme. And that soupy mass requires water. How much water do you need? Well, an Australian study found the people who drank the most water, 13 cups a day, decreased their risk of kidney disease. Now, the going, the, 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 the regular strategy is eight, eight glasses of water a day. There's no real way to know how much water you need. But keep in mind, the more water you're drinking, the more you're going to lose your B vitamins, the more you're going to lose your vitamin C, the more you're going to lose your electrolytes as they are excreted through your urine. And the more you urinate, the more, the more, more water you drink, the more you urinate, the more you're going to lose these nutrients, thus the importance of beyond tangy tangerine and electrolyte drinks and veggie drinks. If you're going to drink water, 
Drink BTT water. Drink Beyond Tangy Tangerine water. And if you're drinking lots of bottled water, at least once or twice a day, get yourself some BTT. I always like people to sip on the BTT all day long and also use your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with meals. It will help replace the nutrients that are missing out of the foods. Remember, these electrolytes, the B vitamins and, and vitamin C, as uh, B vitamins, electrolytes, and vitamin C are water soluble and they're processed out of foods quickly, very quickly. If you're eating, subsisting on processed foods, you may get a little added, uh, added nutrients, added nutritional value because they do fortify these foods, but it's not, it's not going to be the same as the real nutrients that are in, uh, that are in your, uh, it, that should be in the foods that we're eating. Drink your BTT with your meals and you'll replace those nutrients much more effectively. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Dave in the thumb, good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, buddy. Good morning, Ben. How are you doing? I am doing well. What's going on in the good, thumb? Good, good. Hey, let, uh, a few months ago you were on uh, sitting in on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie show. I called you about my friend out there in uh, Oregon. He, ha he, ha he did have that bypass. Um, we were talking about chelation, and he he just uh, couldn't take the the anxiety associated with what they told him. You know how blocked he was. It's scary. He, it's definitely yeah, scary. Yeah. And and so anyway, he had the operation, and he's he's still recovering. He's got a lot of issues. He's got uh, herpes. He was on Propecia many many years ago, and he's had you know ongoing problems from that. But he says when he takes the tangy, it makes his blood pressure go up. And I told him, okay, switch to the to the tablets. He said, oh, he feel, feels horrible when he takes how, that. How does he know he, it? Hang on, Dave. How yeah. does he know it makes his blood pressure go up? Does he take his I, blood pressure before the BTT and then the blood pressure after? <laughs> I did I mean, not I, ask him that. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I don't really know how that makes sense. Blood pressure is – now, if he's having an allergic reaction or something, that can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, one of the ways that you can tell if you're having a, an allergic reaction to a food is by doing a pulse test where you take your pulse before and after foods. Typically, foods will, that you're allergic to will make your pulse race. And if you're having an allergic reaction, I suppose it's possible that you can your blood pressure can go up. But that's unlikely. I don't think – I can't imagine that's the case. Have him do smaller doses and see if he has the same problem. Have him sip on it slowly throughout the day and see if he has the same problem. Hang on, Dave. We'll finish when we come back, okay? Thank gotta you. Take a, gotta take a commercial break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We'll return right after this. On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Dave in the thumb about uh, heart bypass and what were you saying, uh, allergy or uh, uh, high blood pressure or blood pressure increase with the BTT. I'm not sure I'm, I'm buying that necessarily. In fact, all the nutrients in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine uh, actually lower blood pressure, although allergic reactions are always possible and you never really know 100%. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to dispute his personal experience, but uh, have him do smaller doses. And then if he's really, if he's not 100% positive, maybe do a blood pressure test before and after and see what happens. What else, what, uh, anything else going on, Dave? Anything else I can help you with? Well, I, I you know, I, I did tell him about the, you know, the foods and uh, could be an allergy and it could be inflammation causing his blood pressure rise or pain. And also I told him, we'll switch to the tablets. He said he tried the tablets, he feels awful when he takes either the tangy or the tablets and he's getting explosive diarrhea from the beyond osteo at night. At no, night just from the osteo he... and I told him don't you know, dilute it more and slow down yeah. and Oh, Good I'm advice. down to one cap in, in water, and it's still, I feel horrible. Good advice. That. Look, you got a, you got a very compromised patient here. People don't just right. get bypasses. They don't just wake up in the morning one day and say, I'm going to have a bypass. It's a result <laughs> of long-term bodily deterioration. So th even if you don't notice it, 
you know, because we don't really. Sometimes we our health our health challenges go under the radar. But if he's if his cardiovascular health was deteriorated to the point where he needed a bypass, this is a man who's very compromised. So anything anything's really possible. But your advice is very smart, very wise advice, sage advice, Dave. In the thumb, uh, smaller that. doses, smaller doses is the way to go. Now, if he notices One there's more a thing, though. Well, hey, uh, let me he, just finish this real quick. Okay. Real quick. Sorry. If he notices that there's he gets improved results with smaller doses. It just may be that he's uh, that he's trying to put too much into his system all at once. If the doses don't affect his symptoms, in other words, if he takes small, does smaller doses and he still has the problems, then I would say that he, he's having some kind of reaction. But again, I find that unlikely. What, what was your next next question? Well, I Dave? thought so too, and I thought he could be possibly detoxing. No, um, no, no, not I'm not from the no. Tangy. Okay. I wouldn't think it's a detox uh, detox issue. High blood pressure is a sign. This is what high blood pressure is about, simply put. It's a sign that the body is in duress. So when high blood pressure occurs, when hypertension occurs, something the body is somehow trying to deal with something it perceives as a survival threat. It could be an emotional or psychological issue. There's like something called white coat hypertension where people have high blood pressure when they go to the doctor's office or when they get their their uh, blood pressure tested, they'll actually, it'll actually spike. That's called white coat hypertension. We all make jokes about stressful situations making your blood pressure rise. And that's because, again, high pressure situations are survival threats and that, the body copes with survival threats by rerouting the blood and raising the pressure. High blood pressure can be caused by elevated blood sugar. High blood pressure can be caused by elevated cortisol. So these are all the reasons why blood pressure goes up. When your blood pressure goes up, look for stressors. If you want it to drop really quickly, relax the body. Just a hot bath, just a hot shower will relax the body enough to drop the blood pressure. Oxygenation, sitting on the couch and slow deep breathing will do it. Take your blood pressure baseline. Slow deep breathe for five or 10 minutes, take your blood pressure again, watch what happens. It'll drop faster than any antihypertensive drug. A hot bath will do the same thing with no toxicity. All right, what else, Dave? Uh, genital herpes. Uh, herpes is a opportunistic virus. By that I mean it waits for an opportunity. It lives in the body and it jumps under conditions of low uh, of uh, nutritional deficiency, especially in antioxidant and immune boosting nutrients. It will jump when white blood cell count drops after eating sugar or a lot of sugar. And of course, as we just talked about stressful situations, those tend to reduce the body's ability to fight that virus. And again, the op virus is opportunistic, so it will pounce. So stressful situations, elevated blood sugar, and nutritional deficiencies. Now there's a couple nutrients that you can use that are just flat out immune boosting nutrients. Vitamin C is the king of the immune, boost, immune boosting nutrients. And by the way, sugar will reduce vitamin C levels. So the more sugar you're eating, the lower your vitamin C levels will be. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin C. Beyond Tangy Tangerine is a wonderful way to do that. Make sure you're getting enough selenium. Use your ultimate selenium, 400 to 600 micrograms a day. The selenium is wonderfully antiviral. I would be throwing in other antiviral or anti uh, or, or pro-immune boosting nutrients, specifically something called NAC, N-acetylcysteine, which I absolutely love. That's a, a powerful immune boosting nutrient. Anything that helps you build something called glutathione, probably most of our listeners have heard of glutathione. It's the body's most powerful disease fighter. Glutathione is made in the liver. The more prescription drugs you're taking, the less glutathione you're going to make. And that's not going to show up on your package insert. That's not going to show up as a side effect, but you're going to be more susceptible to herpes. You're going to be more susceptible to colds. You're going to be more susceptible to viruses. So using, uh, using glutathione boosters, glutamine, the amino acid glutamine, cysteine in the form of N-acetylcysteine, and the amino acid glycine. And then there's the all-time king of immune boosting nutrients, the king of antiviral nutrients, and that's zinc. 50 milligrams a day of zinc is an absolute must-have. When you're taking your zinc, make sure you balance it out with copper. 50 milligrams of zinc picolinate a day, two to four milligrams of some kind of chelated copper a day. They work in balance. Does that help you, David the, Dave and the Thumb? You're awesome, Ben. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, buddy. Love you, brother. 
Thank you, my man. Have a beautiful day. We'll talk, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Okay, uh, Carl the Truth Raider. What is up, my friend? Good morning. Well, good morning, Bob, uh, Ben. I'm really uh, excited to tell you about this opportunity that, I'm, that I had an idea to do, and I think I'm going to carry this out. But it's a little bit disappointing about plants and vegetables. They're a little discouraging. <laughs> well, no, I didn't say that they're all bad. I just said that I they're not all good. There's great right, stuff yeah, in plants. You have to figure out which ones are, so it, 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 it's kind of a test that you have to... Yeah, try you got to try, try things out, there. and you can yeah. always cook and braise and steam and, and, and soak, and all of these things, all those strategies are ways that you can mitigate or reduce the toxic, toxicity of some of these plants, but you just got to sure. be a little bit vigilant, put it that way. How is the uh, artichokes? Because I, I cooked a couple of artichokes here. Well, artichokes those... can be great. Artichokes okay. can potentially be great, but they can also be problematic. Okay. Okay, well, I'll have to... Go through trial and error and see how they are. Did you ever eat an artichoke without cooking it? Did you ever try to eat the, the leaf no, of an artichoke? It, it, no, because it's, it's like eating a raw, you know, raw. It's plant. not very tasty. It's no. very untasty. And yep, when something is yeah. when something's not palatable like that, that's usually a sign that the plant is trying to protect itself. Absolutely. Now, what I've done here is I've I put my name in because they were needing to have new people, uh, you know, be part of the member of the board of tennis officials here in the Northwest. And I got selected to be a director of tennis officials here in the nice. class. I'm one of the two. Nice. I'm the Oregon. I'm the Oregon chapter, and there's another Very individual nice. that has the Washington chapter. Congratulations. Thanks. So this, what this does is open up an opportunity for me to put in ideas of how to improve our experience. And uh, one part of my ideas that I have in my platform is to try to introduce the longevity products and perhaps maybe your truth treatment skin products to the association. And see, oh. uh, see how they go about that. See, you know, lovely uh, idea. Yeah, it's an idea. You know, to improve our experience. You know, because uh, the, being tennis officials, we do many different types of roles. We do chairs, but a lot of our work we do is standing. We do a lot of what is called roving. So we go from court to court to court to court because we are working at a site where multiple matches are going on simultaneously. So we have to travel from court to court to find out and uh, to monitor and watch and resolve issues on courts. So that could be taxing because we're standing on our feet all day and we, we kind of get tired for six or eight hour shifts. Sometimes we get a chance to sit down, but a lot of times we'll get caught standing BTT. for two to three hours. He sounds like a job for the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Exactly. And I wanted to promote that to them. They'll give you more energy. They'll give you yeah. quicker wit to make quick decisions, split second decisions. And most importantly of all, where does that ball land on the court? We want to make sure we have sharp, good, clear vision and we have a firm uh, decision in our mind where that ball landed. Well, you know, get, in case of, yeah. get some samples of BTT. Hand out some samples of BTT. That's another, by the way, you raise a very good point. Athletic performance is a very important place where the Beyond Tangy Tangerine can provide benefits. Pre, pre-athletic pre performance and post-athletic performance. Pre-athletic performance, it may make your tennis game better, make your golf game better, make you hit a baseball better, give you more focus, exactly. give you more concentration. Post-athletic performance, it can help replace nutrients that are expended, that are used by your your athletic performance. So pre and post is a great time to do your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And after a workout also is a great time to do your Beyond Tangy Tangerine or any nutritional supplements. After you work out at the gym, your uh, body is in a negative state when it comes to many nutrients, especially protein and amino acids, as well as your B vitamins. So when you come home from the gym, that's the best time to do your nutritional supplements. Carl the Truth Raider, I got to go. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. And thanks to all my bright side listeners. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my True Skin Health products at True truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and all the longevity products at criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. And please sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can join the Brightside Ben team and start your own longevity business. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.